Good morning. It's March 20th, and we'll be starting our reading this morning in Numbers chapter 30 at verse 1. Numbers 30, verse 1, and let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to open your word, to spend it with you in your presence. I pray that you would just speak to us through your word, Lord, and that you would just help us to glean those things that you want us to know, that we can apply to our lives, Lord. Would you just bless the day that's ahead. Fill us with your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Numbers 30, verse 1 says, Then the Lord spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Or if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house in her youth and her father hears her vow and the agreement by which she has bound herself and her father holds his peace then all her vows shall stand and every agreement with which she has bound herself shall stand but if her father overrules her on the day that he hears then none of the vows nor agreements by which she has bound herself shall stand and the lord will release her because her father overruled her if indeed she takes a husband while bound by her vows or by a rash utterance from her lips by which she bound herself and her husband hears it and makes no response to her on the day he, that he hears, then her vow shall stand and her agreements by which she bound herself shall stand. But if her husband overhears, overrules her on the day that he hears it, he shall make void her vow which she took and she, what she uttered with her lips." By which she bound herself and the lord will release her also any vow of a widow or divorced woman by which she has bound herself shall stand against her if she vowed in her husband's house or bound herself by an agreement with an oath and her husband heard it and made no response to her and did not overrule her then all her vows shall stand and every agreement by which she bound herself shall stand but if her husband truly made them void on the day he heard them and whatever proceeded from her lips concerning her vows or concerning the agreement binding her, it shall not stand. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord will release her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict her soul, her husband may conform, confirm it, and her husband may void it. Now, if her husband makes no response whatever to her from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or all the agreements that bind her, he confirms them because he made no response to her on the day that he heard them. But if he does make them void after he has heard them, then he shall bear her guilt. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and a wife, and between a father and his daughter in her youth in her father's house. Chapter 31 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the children of Israel. Afterward you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm yourself, arm some of yourselves for war, and let them go against the Midianites, and take vengeance for the Lord on Midian. A thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel you shall send to war. And there were recruited from the divisions of Israel one thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. Then Moses sent them to the war one thousand from each tribe. He sent them to war with the Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, with the holy articles and the signal trumpets in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, just as the Lord commanded Moses, and they killed all the males. They killed the kings of Midian and the rest of those who were killed, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. Balaam, the son of Baor, they also killed with the sword. And the children of Israel took the women of Midian captive with their little ones and took as spoil all their cattle, all their flocks, and all their goods. They also burned with fire all the cities where they dwelt and all their forts, and they took all the spoil and all the booty of man and beast. And then they brought the captives, the booty and the spoil to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp in the plains of Moab by the Jordan, across from Jericho. 
And Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was angry with the officers of the army, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, who had come from battle. And Moses said to them, Have you kept all the women alive? Look, these women caused the children of Israel, through the counsel of Balaam, to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor, and there was plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known a man intimately. But keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not known a man intimately. And as for you, remain outside the camp seven days. Whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. Purify every garment, everything made of leather, everything of woven goat's hair, and everything made of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men of war who had gone to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that can endure fire you shall put through the fire, and it shall be clean, and it shall be purified with water, with the water of purification. But all that cannot endure fire you shall put through water, and you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and be clean, and afterward you may come into the camp. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Count up the plunder that was taken of man and beast, you and Eleazar the priests and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the plunder into two parts between those who took part in the war who went out to battle and all the congregation, and levy a tribute for the Lord on the men of war who went out to the battle, one of every five hundred of the persons, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep, take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as a heave offering to the Lord, and from the children of Israel's half you shall take one half, one of every fifty drawn from the persons, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep, from all the livestock, and give them to the Levites who keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Moses, Eleazar, and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The booty remaining from the plunder which the men of war had taken was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all of women who had not known a man intimately. And a half the portion for those who had gone out to war was in number 337,500 sheep, and the Lord's tribute of the sheep was 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The persons who were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 32 persons. So Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, to Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. <clears throat> and from the children of Israel's half, which Moses separated from the men who fought, now the half belonging to the congregation was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 persons. And from the children of Israel's half, Moses took one of every 50 drawn from man and beast and gave them to the Levites who kept charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over the thousands of the army, the captains of thousands and captains of hundred, came near to Moses and they said to Moses, your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command and not a man of us is missing. Therefore we have brought an offering for the Lord what every man found of ornaments of gold, armlets and bracelets and signet rings and earrings and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. So Eleazar, so Moses and Eleazar the priests received the gold from them and all the fashioned ornaments and all the gold of the offering that they offered to the Lord from the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds. It was 16,750 shekels. The men of war had taken spoil every man for himself and Moses and Eleazar the priests received the gold from the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of meeting as a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 1.
Then Jesus, being filled with the Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me, worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, <clears throat> and him only you shall serve. And then he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and his, his custom was he went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day. And stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to, procl to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three, day, three years and six months, and there was a great famine in the land, in all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So all those in the congregation, so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they led him to the brow of a hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. Psalm chapter 63, verse 1. A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. To see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. 
Proverbs 11, verse 20. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Though they join forces, the wicked will go, not go unpunished, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. And that's going to do it for our reading today. God bless you. Have a great day.